And welcome everyone to another edition of Quarantine Q&A. This is Roger Hoover with you in Tuscaloosa. Hope everyone's doing well and staying safe during this time. This Quarantine Q&A today with Brian Passing is brought to you by Alabama One Credit Union. They've been voted Tuscaloosa's best credit union and mortgage lender. Alabama One offers low rate auto, mortgage, and business loans, plus protection for it all with Alabama One Insurance. Visit any of their nine local branches or check them out online, alabamaone.org. Alabama One, a proud supporter of Crimson Tide Athletics. Well, over the last few weeks, we've had a lot of great conversations with people around Alabama athletics, mostly looking at the football side of things. We've also had baseball coach Brad Bohannon, so figured it was time to get back to Coleman Coliseum, so to speak, back to the hardwood, and we go now to the color analyst of Alabama men's basketball broadcast, Brian Passink, who joins us from his home in the Birmingham area. Brian, you look good. You look like you haven't shaved <laughs> in a long, long time. The beard game is very strong. At the moment. Uh, yeah, not not looking good. I think the last time I shaved was the last time you and I were together, the morning of what we thought would be Alabama's uh, first round in the SEC tournament, a crazy Thursday morning in Nashville. And uh, boy, how, how the world has changed since then. But uh, listen, it's great to be with you. It's great to see you, even though we can't be together. Uh, great to see your face and uh, good to be with you again. And a lot of good things happening. Uh, around Alabama athletics, especially the basketball program. It's been a great couple of weeks. Yeah, a great couple of weeks for Alabama out of what could have been a really tough situation. Like you said, it all started with that day we were getting ready for Alabama and Tennessee and Alabama's first game in the SEC tournament. And as it turned out, Brian, you are one of very few people that got to broadcast a game in the SEC tournament, able to be there on that Wednesday night. But like you mentioned, just so much has changed since that point. It, it really has, and uh, that that Wednesday night, um, you know, I was fortunate enough to do the the uh, Arkansas Vanderbilt game for the SEC radio network, and as we were doing the game, um, my phone started blowing up with the, the the word that the NBA was canceling or suspending uh, the rest of their season, and uh, knew what was going on with with the coronavirus. But at that point, things had, had not shut down, and and the NBA. Uh, making that move, you knew things were going to change it in a big way. Uh, we, we also found out that the SEC tournament uh, would continue to be played that following Thursday, but without fans. At least that was the plan. Uh, so we knew it was going to be a, a strange tournament in Nashville. Uh, but to get to the arena uh, Thursday morning was still, you know, we, we, we thought we were going to play the game. We thought it was going to be uh, Alabama and Tennessee. Uh, there on the, the quarterfinal round of, of the SEC tournament, or the, the Thursday round, I should say, uh, we thought we'd play the game. There wouldn't be fans. We knew it was going to be strange, but I took minutes before our broadcast uh, that the SEC tournament, along with uh, pretty much every other tournament in college basketball, was canceled. It was just a, a, a surreal feeling, uh, one that none of us uh, will ever forget. Certainly won't. And what were some of the next steps for you uh, after the tournament was over? What have you been doing the last few weeks? Well, you know, going back to, to the day job, which is medical sales, and I've uh, been able, uh, to, like like everybody else, I haven't been able to, to necessarily uh, go into work. I, I do a lot of work from home anyway. Uh, so i um, been able to, to work uh, from my computer here at, at my home and make some phone calls and, and try as best I can uh, to, to continue to work, but it's been a it's been a strange time. It's been uh, heartbreaking to hear uh, the stories around the country and around the world with what's going on with the coronavirus. Uh, but it's also been a time uh, that you know for our family and everybody's doing well, uh, thankfully. But it's been a time that we've had a chance to spend a lot of time together as a family. And with two teenage daughters, that's not always something that that we have an opportunity to do. So been a lot of family time, um, cooked out a lot, spent a lot of time at home and I uh, can't wait to get back uh, to work. And I know um, our girls can't wait to get back to school. I know uh, Alabama students can't, can't wait to get back on campus as well, but we're trying to make the, the most of a very unique situation. And uh, fortunately for us, a lot of that is family time. 
Well, it's certainly good you've been able to have some family time as this was a kind of unusual year just in general for Alabama men's basketball when you look at the start of the Nate Oates era. And anytime you bring in a new coach, you know there's going to be a transition period, uh, players buying into his system, new faces coming onto the scene. And in one season, Brian, even though it got cut short, Alabama didn't get to really play in the postseason, we almost saw everything you could possibly see in a season, it felt like. Yeah, what what a a crazy season. I guess you know, crazy times. Uh, we had no idea <laughs> where, where how the season would end. Didn't anticipate that it would end the way that it would for for us and for everybody around college basketball. But you know, there was a lot of excitement coming into the year with NATO bringing one of the most exciting styles uh, of college basketball into Tuscaloosa. So. Um, you know, some good players returned and felt like this team would have a chance to be pretty good. Now, uh, an up and down season, most of that, in my opinion, due to situation. Never seen a team go through the injuries uh, that this team had gone through. Well over 100 games missed uh, by key players that would have played significant roles uh, on this team. And so that ended the year in a very, uh, very good SEC, very difficult schedule all the way around. But I think one thing that we took away from the season is you can see the vision of Nate Oates. You could see the reason that Greg Byrne brought Nate Oates uh, to Tuscaloosa because style of play, it, uh, fans love it, exciting, up and down, one of the fastest paced teams in basketball. If you like three-point shooting, which I certainly do, you have to love uh, the way that Alabama put up threes at a high rate, one of the best three-point shooting teams in the country. And, you know, as you and I and Chris Stewart talked about all season long, is while this is exciting for fans, it's also something uh, that recruits around the country are going to take notice of, and they're going to pay a lot of attention to Alabama basketball under Nate Oates because this has got the way that they want to feel a sense of freedom they want to play uh, with a lot of pace offensively want to play this this style and a lot of coaches talk about it not everybody does it so uh, to hear those things in the opening press conference uh, that Nate Oates talked about you knew because of his track record we were going to see uh, Alabama implement those things and did so I, I, I thought uh, at, a, at, a, at a very nice rate early on we saw uh, that this is going to be one of the most exciting teams, one of the most exciting programs in college basketball. Fans are excited. And as we talked about over the last couple of weeks, recruits taking notice. Alabama now with one of the best signing classes or will be one of the best signing classes in the country. Uh, and that's something that we really didn't anticipate because there's only one graduating senior on the team. That's Beetle Bolden. Uh, but, you know, you're going to have, like everybody, some transition with your roster. And we thought we'd see some new faces and we're certainly going to see that, but the good news is a lot of these new faces, awfully good basketball players, so the fun will continue in Tuscaloosa. Yeah, they certainly will, and we hope to have Coach Oates join us next week after signing day is complete to really break down all the new faces that will be coming in, but certainly the reports we've seen have been really good, and Brian, you got to be impressed that he's been able to recruit a lot like this, like we're doing right now, talking on a <laughs> Skype call, having a lot of phone calls. It has not been your normal recruiting process at all for Alabama's coaches. Yeah, and they've obviously adapted very well doing some uh, in zone or uh, in home virtual visits, having uh, some potential recruits see the the facilities and the campus through uh, technology, and you know, and fortunately, the the Alabama coaches have been able to sell this university and uh, and and showing the the style of play. You have a track record, a proven track record of Nate Oates at Buffalo, now in Tuscaloosa, of, of how uh, this this team is going to play and how certain guys will fit into this system. And, you know, the tough part and the thing that and I thought would be a disadvantage to Alabama and, uh, is to not be able to bring guys to campus because, um, you know, I think everybody uh, watching will agree with this. Tuscaloosa, the University of Alabama, the campus is a special place and it's beautiful. And not everybody has that. Some of the, the great programs around the country, they bring guys to campus at night when you can't see quite as well. That's not the case in Tuscaloosa. You want to get guys on campus uh, to see 
you know, how, how uh, spectacular a campus the University of Alabama is. Get them to campus on a, on a football game weekend and experience uh, all that Tuscaloosa has to offer. And uh, this at this time, you can't do those things, obviously. Uh, hopefully, we'll be able to do those things during football season. Uh, but I think more than anything, and the one thing you hear consistently uh, from some of the top recruits and transfers in the country is they're paying attention to Nate Oates and what he's doing in this system. They saw Alabama on TV, want to be a part of it, and fortunately a lot of those guys have decided to come play. You mentioned there could be some more roster shakeup for the Crimson Tide. Uh, interesting from Kyra Lewis Jr. to John Petty and also Herb Jones, testing the waters and seeing what their NBA draft potential could be. Just first of all, do you like the process now with these guys still having the option to be able to come back to school without some of the penalties like there had been before if you wanted to test the waters? And then just kind of what do you think for those three guys? Yeah, I think it's a smart thing to do, especially with guys who are, have legitimate pro potential and, and, and the potential to play at the next level. And all three of those guys do. And, you know, it, it's a, you know, we keep saying it, it's a strange time. <laughs> and it is. Uh, and it is for, for these guys who are testing the waters right now. Um, you know, this would be a time that you'd be uh, going to combines and workouts and, and playing uh, and, and working out in front of NBA executives and coaches and, uh, trying to get a feel for where you might go in the draft. Now, you can't do that. You can do some different things virtually, uh, but you know you can't go uh, and play with with in, in front of these NBA teams. So I, I think it puts some of these guys, not just Alabama guys, but everybody who's uh, testing the waters, uh, it, it's it's put them at a little bit of a disadvantage that you know we've never seen before. Uh, but also, I think it makes some sense to try to get some feedback. You, you, these guys will, will look at game tape, and I'm talking about the NBA. They'll look at game tape. They'll, they'll analyze uh, these guys best they can from a distance and get feedback. And because the rules have changed and guys can put their names in the draft now, and if they get the, the result, the report they want, they can keep their name in the draft. And if they don't, they can come back to college and try to get better and try to improve their draft status. So I think it makes a lot of sense uh, for Kyra, for Herb, for John uh, to test the waters and see where they stand. Now, in my opinion, you know, I think Kyra's an NBA player. I, I think uh, from all that I've seen, the projections have him somewhere in the first round. And if that's the case, I wouldn't blame him at all for going. He's had an outstanding couple of years and uh, I thought he was one of the best players in the SEC, a first-team All-SEC selection. Obviously, it wasn't just me that thought that. So I think Kyra is a guy that, um, that, in my opinion, and I haven't talked to him or the coaches about this, I, I'd be surprised if Kyra decided to come back uh, to Alabama next year. Now, um, if, he, if he decides he wants another year in college, I know uh, myself, Alabama fans, the coaches would welcome welcome him back um, with open arms, but if he decided he's getting the feedback that, that we're getting from just reading some of these draft boards on, on the internet, wouldn't blame him at all. Uh, I think John Petty is essentially a NBA player. Now, haven't seen his name quite as high on draft boards as Tyra, but he's one of the most improved players in college basketball. I think uh, the new coaching staff, Nate Oates, and, and these guys and the, and the style of play uh, fit John uh, to his credit. Uh, he took a lot of coaching, a lot of hard coaching, and really improved his game in every facet. Uh, so, you know, he, he's um, someone that I think will have a, a future at the next level. And whether that's now or, or a year from now, uh, I'm not sure. But uh, he's someone that I think could go either way. And and I would personally expect Herb Jones to come back. And, and, and this is not a knock against Herb at all. Um, I think Herb might be going uh, in, into the NBA right now and be a high draft pick had he not had that situation uh, with his elbow hurting it at the beginning of the year. And then just having really a, a few weeks where he was healthy before breaking his wrist, uh, both on his left arm, which is his shooting arm. So um, I think that set him back and maybe didn't have, I mean, he had an incredible year. I mean, a heroic type year to see what he did, essentially playing the entire season with one arm, one of the best defenders if not the very best defender in college basketball to play the way he did was 
uh, just incredible. And I think he is for sure an NBA player. But I would, I would expect right now, um, if I had to guess, I would expect Herb to be back. But um, not sure about John. And I would expect Kyra uh, to keep his name in the draft. But uh, we love all three of those guys back, um, r- regardless of what they've done. They deserve uh, the respect, the admiration, and appreciation of Alabama fans for what they've meant to this program, helping build Alabama basketball uh, to what we all want it to be. And even though uh, these guys, at least the last couple of years, didn't make the NCAA tournament, you can see the foundation that this program is being built on, and all three of those guys had a lot to do with that. They certainly did. And like we mentioned before, when you look at what, if some of those guys come back, plus the additions to the roster we thought we would see this year, had there not been injury and also with the Javon Quinterly situation, again, there's a lot to like about next year's roster for the Crimson Tide. And you even had it on your Twitter earlier that Joe Lenardi right now has Alabama as an NCAA tournament team next year. Now, again, that's <laughs> way down the road. But just things like that have got to get this fan base excited. Yeah, the the never too early uh, NCAA tournament <laughs> projections, and it's never too early when Alabama's in the mix. And uh, you know, right now with no sports, this is all we have is projections. But I think a lot of people around college basketball uh, have taken notice to what's going on in, in Tuscaloosa uh, with the new coaching staff, and and uh, not just the guys that are sitting out, but the guys that are returning or the guys that are that. That I'm sorry, the, the recruits that are coming. You know, Alabama right now is in pretty much everybody's top 15 in America uh, in terms of recruiting class for this year. Uh, that doesn't count Javon Quinterly. It doesn't count James Rojas and Juwan Geary, all these guys that set out that I think will be impact players uh, this year. It also doesn't take into account graduate transfers, which Alabama uh, just got a commitment from one of the best in the country. Uh, so when you look at the influx of talent, the guys that were sitting out, some of which due to injuries, some of which in Javon's case, uh, because he, he didn't get cleared by the NCAA, should have, in my opinion. But I think, uh, you know, it may end up being a blessing in disguise with this season being cut short. Uh, Javon gets another year and he's going to be hungry and ready to go next year. But with the guys sitting out, uh, the guys coming in, uh, the transfers that will be eligible – uh, I don't know that anybody in college basketball will have as much of an influx of talent as Alabama has this year. I saw before the latest commitment that Alabama was uh, number two in the country in what uh, these programs have done in the last month of the season, how they've improved their rosters. Alabama was second in the country. Uh, so there's a lot going on in Tuscaloosa in terms of basketball, and I think the bottom line is – the future is really bright. Certainly is. And again, we're live on the Crimson Tide Sports Network Facebook page. And we invite you, if you have any questions for Brian Passing, let us know below. I think, young lady you might know, named Maggie Blair Passing, she is asking for you to <laughs> oh, <no>. please shave. <laughs> <laughs> Are you kidding? This is, this is amazing. Now you had this you look know, earlier in the season, too. Well, you know, I and again, and it was about as popular in my house <laughs> as this is. Uh, you know, the, the, this is the uh, not even trimmed up look. This is a potential Duck Dynasty look. There you go. Um, so this, but you know, the good thing in the day and age we're living in is, uh, you know, now the like if you look like a, you know, you haven't gotten a haircut and you haven't shaved, like you're doing right in society. So like when I see somebody that's clean shaven, has their hair, you know, they got a haircut. I'm, I'm judging them. I'm, are they really, you know, quarantining themselves social and, and social distancing <laughs> like they should? Obviously, I look like a bum. That means I'm staying home a lot. So I should be praised. <laughs> well, you'll certainly get praise from most Alabama fans, <laughs> except for Maggie Blair passing. Uh, of course, you're the longtime uh, color analyst on our radio broadcast for men's basketball at Alabama, and you also came to the capstone as a player. Uh, let's just go back down memory road just a little bit. Uh, other than our good friend Mark Jennings, who helped steer you to Tuscaloosa right. many <laughs> moons ago, uh, what, what led you to Alabama? Why did you want to come play for Coach Wim Sanderson? Well, I mean, you said it. Wimp Sanderson at, at that time and was the best coach in the SEC. Alabama was the best program 
in basketball in the Southeastern Conference. You know, you, you go back to the early 90s, Kentucky was on probation, Alabama was winning uh, tournament and conference championships year after year. Uh, they, they called the SEC tournament the Wimp Sanderson Invitational. And, uh, you know, when, when, uh, when Coach Sanderson walked into my living room wearing that plaid jacket and, and a bunch of championship rings, man, I was sold. I wanted to be a part of it. And, you know, the thing that, that I like about what's going on now is, you know, there's such an appreciation for the history of Alabama basketball. I'm talking about Nate Oates and his staff. They, they know uh, that there is a, a tradition of excellence in basketball that, that maybe doesn't get talked about enough. And uh, while it maybe wasn't winning national championships or going to Final Fours, you know, the Sweet 16 every year pretty much had Alabama in it. The SEC tournament final championship for, uh, was uh, Alabama in the SEC. So um, when I had a chance to play for the best basketball program in the Southeastern Conference, uh, man, I jumped at it and so glad I did. It was, it was a great experience playing at Alabama. Um, you know, a dream come true to play major college basketball. And also, you know, this many years later, and as you can see the white in, in, in this beer, there, it is many, many years later, uh, to still be a part of the Alabama basketball program is just something that I couldn't imagine for this long. I, I love the university. I love the basketball program. I love being a part of it as a player uh, and love being a part of it now as a broadcaster. Yeah, and that leads me right to my next question. Uh, of course, you had your career at Alabama as a player a few years away from the program. Just what made you uh, get back in the mix on the radio side? Well, um, you know, it's funny. When, when I was a player, and listen, I, <laughs> I wasn't a very good player uh, at Alabama, but uh, but I got to play some, and, 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 you know, I didn't get asked to be interviewed that often, but when I did, I hated it. <laughs> I was shy. I didn't want to be on the radio or TV. I didn't want any part of it. Uh, so if you would have told me back then um, that I'd be, you know, part of the Crimson Tide Sports Network for, I think, 17 years now, which is crazy, um, I would have said, you're crazy. I, I, I thought this would definitely not be something that I would want to do. I thought I'd coach. And I love the game, still love it as much as I ever have. Uh, and, you know, when I – graduated um, and didn't go into coaching and they want, they were looking for a, a former player to be a part of the broadcast. Um, you know, at that time I was doing a little bit of radio with some friends, just analyzing college basketball and, and jumped at the opportunity and uh, have loved every second of it, you know, to get to work with Chris Stewart, who is uh, the man we, you know, you and I are in agreement. He, he's as good as they come uh in, in this business uh as a play-by-play -play guy but also as a person tom stipe uh to work with you we had such a great time this year uh, working together uh and just made it more you know incredible time so to be a part of the program the camaraderie that we have at the crimson tide sports network um just uh, so much fun to be a part of and and it's a whole lot more fun when we're winning uh, we did a lot of winning this year and, and going to do a lot more in the future. Yeah, no doubt. And for you, you get to sit. You had, have one of the best seats in the house, always sitting courtside or at, like at Penn State. We were in a pretty nice box, <laughs> kind of elevated for that ball game. But when you're watching the game as the color analyst, uh, how are you thinking? Are you more thinking like a fan? you more thinking like a coach in those moments? Like a player. Okay. And, uh, you know, that's, you know, and everybody has a different perspective as, as a broadcaster. Now, I could never do. Uh, what you and Chris do is play by play guys is, you know, and, you know, if, if Chris ever went down, I would, uh, I would cut the, cut the line if, if I had to do the play by play <laughs> part, cause I, I would never even attempt it. Uh, but you know, the, the fun thing for me is, you know, I just comment on what I see and I, and I view it as a player. Now, um, you know, I, I come from, a, a my dad was a coach, so I've been a, I'm around a lot of coaches. So, you know, I would say for me, I think of it both from a more from a player standpoint and what those guys are thinking and going through. Uh, but also, I, I know I know what the coaches are telling them to do, too. And and those things don't always align. I, I, you know, of course, always listen to my coaches and did exactly what they told me to do. But I think sometimes and I try to communicate this fans get frustrated with coaches when players do certain things. And I know what the coach is telling them to do. And then I know what they actually do. I was guilty of it as a player. And I think sometimes guys are guilty of it as well, but, uh, but it, it's a lot of fun uh, to, to be a part of it and, and to throw my two cents in 
uh, two cents in when Chris lets me talk. See, when you were filling in, and this is why we're buddies, you, you let me talk a little bit more than Chris. And uh, so, but, but, you know, but it's all good because people want to, you know, they want to hear Chris more than you and I anyway. So it all works out. Yeah, no doubt. But first is the <laughs> score. Everyone wants to know the score. You know, it really doesn't matter what Chris, you, Stipe, any of us say until that score time is and given. Score. And, and then we got to let it go and have a good time after that. <laughs> time and score and Alabama's winning. Yes. Uh, that, other than that, the rest of it is just details. Although sometimes in the tone of your voice, we can tell whether or not Alabama's in front. We, we can uh, and listen and, and bang in on the desk. I, I've, you know, you can hear me bang on the, on, you know, on the desk when, it, when something goes bad for Alabama. And, you know, listen, the hardest part for me is you're asking, you know, how, you know, the perspective I have as an analyst. But the hardest thing for me, and, and you do this extremely well, Chris does this extremely well, I do not, is to be able to be emotional and not lose your mind. Um, I get emotional and I lose my mind and I bang on stuff and try to try to keep my composure. You guys thankfully have rubbed off on me enough to where I can keep it together a little bit. But, uh, you know, the, the fun part of this for me is also also the part I struggle with is I am so emotionally invested in these games. I care much more what's going on uh, on the court than I do in the quality of my analysis. And I probably need to to be aware of that sometimes and, and give more professional analysis. No, nah, we love uh, what you're as doing. <laughs> as long as we're winning, that's that's what people care about. No doubt. Another uh, question from our Facebook page, a uh, really good question from Jerry Black. He asked, if basketball could have one Bama football player to play basketball, who would you choose? And he also asked Deuce, question mark. Hmm, man. Um, gosh, we've, we've got some... some uh, was it? Tell me this. That video wasn't that Henry Ruggs that that went viral that was dunking yes. all over the place. Mm-hmm. Okay, he's a candidate. Um, you know, the, I'll say this though: it is all right. There are very few, and now Alabama has some guys that were big time athletes, obviously in, in all sports in high school, uh, and they could they could play at the college level if they would have gone the basketball route. But, but I would say percentage-wise, there's more basketball players that could translate to football than football players that could translate to basketball. Yeah, I was going to turn that what, question around for you yeah. later on, yeah. So, <laughs> so um, when I was in school, I played with a couple of decent athletes uh, named Hollywood Robinson and Latrell Sprewell. Decent. Okay. Decent. You know, they, they, they tried to keep up with me, you know, make success with that. Yeah. Um, but we would, after conditioning, we'd be out on the football field. And we play two and touch kind of flag football and the football team would be warming up as we were finishing our conditioning. This is preseason conditioning and Latrell Sprewell and Hollywood. I mean, those guys would have taken two starters positions at wide receiver when we were in school, they were, you know, running, you know, run like the wind, jumping up, catching everything in, in the football the Alabama football players were looking at, Latrell and Hollywood, like, man, I'm glad y'all are playing basketball because we'd be losing playing time if you guys ever decided to to play football. But uh, no, I think there's a, a lot of guys on both sides that, you know, when they were maybe ninth, tenth grade, they decided to go one way or the other. But they had options. Uh, John Graham checks in with, he says the correct answer would be Wayne Davis was good enough for him to play D1. I think my pick would just be, cause just cause I want to watch it with the full dreadlocks and everything. Derrick Henry, when he was at Alabama, if he had, uh, put on a basketball Jersey and played, because I think just trying to guard him would be next to impossible. It feels like. Yeah. He's, he's going to get every rebound Yeah, and, and you're and gonna, yeah, he, he's, I, I think he could, he, he could do a pretty good job, uh, defensively rebound the ball. How about this? How about Bola Alanian mm. as a tight end? Man. <laughs> Try guarding him, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, no, we, we could have some fun on on uh, making some trades, football to basketball. That certainly would be a lot of fun. <laughs> and, uh, of course, during your time at Alabama, you got to know uh, Philip Pearson. you got to be really proud of him that he's getting back uh, to the Yellowhammer State in his new role at UAB with Andy Kennedy. Yeah, absolutely. Boy, what, what a change uh, here in the state of Alabama in college basketball in recent years. And, you know, I, I make the argument that this right now uh, is exciting a time in, in college basketball as we've ever seen. You know, obviously, you know, Auburn's doing well with Bruce Pearl. 
The excitement level around Nate Oates is absolutely off the charts right now. UAB's got Andy Kennedy, one of the best players in the history of the program, and and brings a good friend of mine and a former teammate, Philip Pearson, uh, is one of the top recruiters, one of the top assistant coaches in the country. Uh, and then Bucky McMillan, uh, the excitement around him and Buckyball going to Sanford. So uh, it's a great time uh, for basketball and college basketball in our state. And you know, I'm looking at the, the, the schedule next year in between Alabama games uh, and trying to go watch uh, Philip and Andy at UAB and trying to catch a little Buckyball. And then most importantly, Mountain Brook girls basketball. You know, I got to got to watch the, the Lady Spartans play. You know, there's not enough hours in the day and days in the week during basketball season, but uh, but I can't wait. And especially now, you know, we're all cooped up, uh, dying for sports to start back. But, you know, I, I'm looking forward to uh, after November and December into, into basketball season, and I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to be about four places at once. <laughs> no doubt. And, of course, uh, ultimately the scheduling is up to Coach Oates, his staff, and also the Alabama Athletics Administration. Uh, kind of with all the excitement that you reference, even from some non-conference schools around the state of Alabama, just how would you feel if there were more in-state opponents for the Crimson Tide? Obviously, we did see Samford in Birmingham last year, but just uh, kind of what's your feeling on maybe some potential matchups we could see in-state? Yeah, I, I think it'd be a lot of fun. And, you know, I didn't even mention uh, North Alabama, Tony Pujol, former Alabama uh, assistant coach under Anthony Grant, doing a great job there. Uh, South Carolina, uh, South Alabama uh, has a great following. Alabama, you know, has a ton of fans down in the southern part of the state, as, as we mentioned, UAB and Sanford. A lot of great basketball going on in this state. And, uh, you know, if, if, if Nate Oates and his staff decided that uh, want to get around the state, and play some in-state teams, you know, I, wouldn't be a problem with me. I, I think that scheduling is so important. Um, you know, the numbers uh, that plays out, I think, factors into it and is important uh, now as it ever has been. So, uh, you know, where guys uh, rank in your net rankings and, and trying to get quadrant one, quadrant two victories in the non-conference factors in it in a big way. And if all those things lined up, uh, I think it would be great. You know, I look at, you know, the schedule for next year. I mean, it's going to be rough going, but this is, you know, this is, you know, why, why they pay us the big bucks is, to, um, you know, like pre-conference tournaments. Alabama's playing in Maui, and, uh, you know, we're going to have to suck it up and go to Maui and, and, and call some games. So, uh, you know, look, you know, and, and that's going to be obviously a lot of fun, but talk about competition level. I mean, North Carolina will be there, Indiana, Providence, Stanford, Te- uh, Texas, Davidson. Uh, so it's it going to be an incredible field. And I know right now, you know, there's not a lot that the coaches uh, can do in terms of, of working with players with everybody being at home and nobody being on campus. But, you know, now's the time that you're trying to, to make some calls and fill in your schedule. And I know it's very important uh, to NATO and his staff to play a quality schedule. And I think that's what we're going to see next year. Well, and part of those quality schedules, preseason tournaments or non-conference uh, t- time tournaments and we've seen that for Alabama over the years and we've had a couple of these Q&A's already with Chris Stewart uh, mostly talking about football but with that he has given some fun stories kind of on the basketball side about how he's been able to keep up and have you have been able to keep up with some Alabama football games when there has been some overlap (laughs) from time to time and of course on the Crimson Tide Sports Network on the radio we're playing a classic game each and every week and I know uh, we just had the 2009 Iron Bowl between Alabama and Auburn that was a across the network and he said that it was you and your cell phone that kept him abreast of everything that was going on uh, when you guys were internet only until you were able to head upstairs but I'm sure there have been lots of those situations over the years when you guys have found uh, creative ways to make sure you keep up with Alabama football we have listen it's tough on a on an Alabama 11 grad um, when when there's a conflict with basketball and football especially when it comes during the Iron Bowl so uh, that that was a, a tough one because I am fo- trying to, to focus on Alabama basketball. I know y'all talked about the Florida State game uh, in, in Orlando. Meanwhile, you've got uh, the Iron Bowl with with uh, national championship implications. I've got two eyes, so I had one on basketball, one on football. Uh, I you know I'd love to hear my uh, commentary during that game. I bet. <laughs> It was lacking because I was distracted. I, listen, I have a hard enough time when I'm focused. 
Um, but when I'm trying to uh, make sure Alabama <laughs> beats Auburn and, and go to the national championship, I, I'm, I was a little distracted. So I'm sure my, 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 uh, my analysis was not uh, as good as it needed to be. But Chris did all right carrying us through. Yeah, he certainly did. And you guys were able to get to a television and watch during halftime and get back to your seats for the start of the second half and that one. But, uh, you know, it just it goes to show you know, part of the fun of what uh, we get to do across the network, especially during basketball season when football wins. It just fuels the entire university uh, with a lot of pride. I know, like you mentioned, you're an Alabama loving grad and we're just ready to get things back to normal. And hopefully uh, fall, there's going to be some great overlap as well, because I know we certainly want to get back to Coleman Coliseum as soon as we can. No, no doubt about it. And listen, it's what makes this so fun is is the love for the university, uh, and, and you know that's something I, I, I share with with Alabama fans across the the state, the country, and, and the world. This is uh, you know a passionate fan base, and you can count me as one of those. Uh, I'm very passionate about the university, and it's, it, and it's why I'm being a part of the Crimson Tide Sports Network. Uh, it's, it's so much fun. Listen, sports broadcasting is fun. I, I don't care what you're doing, who you're doing it for, uh, but when it means so much to you personally, uh, it's it's just it's a, it's really a dream come true to be a part of it. And I know you know those moments that uh, that, that we've had over the years. In 17 years, uh, you, you have some some unique experiences, and, and Chris and I certainly have uh, together. And, and most of them have been good, thankfully. Uh, but we've had a lot of fun together, and uh, we had a great time. Uh, all of us together this year, and I think it's going to be a whole lot, a, a lot more fun in the future moving forward. Well, we certainly hope so, and Brian. We thank you for the time you've given us on this Tuesday afternoon. Just hope everything continues to be uh, well with you and your family during this time, and uh, hopefully, the next time you and I catch up, it'll be uh, at the Stipe Lounge in our comfortable couches uh, back at Coleman Coliseum on the concourse. Uh, we're certainly all looking forward to that. But again, thank you for your time today. This was really a blast. We enjoyed it. Man, great talking to you, Roger. Always enjoy it and roll tide. Roll tide. That is Brian Passink. We certainly thank him for his time. We also certainly thank Alabama One Credit Union for sponsoring another edition of Quarantine Q&A. We'll have some more fun interviews coming up later in the week, so make sure you like the Crimson Tide Sports Network on Facebook and also go to the notifications when we do have live videos so that way you can join us live as the videos appear. We certainly thank Alabama Athletics as well for sharing this video on their page, and we look to do a lot more of these in the future. So certainly stay tuned to the Crimson Tide Sports Network. Thanks for watching, everyone.